Hello everyone, welcome once again to this uh, lecture on Enzyme and uh, we'll be discussing to you the part one of this uh, presentation. So go with me in the study of uh, Enzyme. So what are enzymes? As I said before in some of my uh, presentations, enzymes are uh, molecules. They are specifically proteins or most of them are proteins and um, their function is to act as a catalyst. Okay, so catalysts are substances that increase the rate of chemical reaction. So in biological system, we have catalysts in the form of enzymes. Okay, it says here most enzymes are globular. So most of the enzymes, actually um, majority of the enzymes are proteins. However, there are few known enzymes to be ribonucleic acid. You call them or we call them uh, ribonuclease. Now let's go to this enzyme of uh, or structure of enzyme. Okay, as I said, enzymes are proteins, but uh, not all proteins are enzymes. Okay, there are many proteins that have catalytic activity. So those proteins that have catalytic activity, we call them enzymes. Remember, um, there are many functions of enzymes. Okay, and one of the functions of enzyme is they act as catalysts. Okay, so let's go to the structures or structure of enzyme. So there are two um, types of enzymes based on uh, structure. One is simple, the other one is conjugated. When we say simple enzyme, they are composed of amino acids only. So, composed of protein only. Conjugated um, enzyme, it has non-protein. Okay? Non-protein part. So, an APO enzyme, this refers to the protein of the conjugated, conjugated enzyme. Okay? APO enzyme, the protein part of the conjugated. Okay, so... The non-protein, the non-protein, okay, is called a cofactor, okay? Cofactor, it's the non-protein part of the conjugated enzyme. Now, um, a bio biochemically active conjugated enzyme is called a holoenzyme, okay? So, what is a holoenzyme? Biochemically active conjugated enzyme. So, in order to become a um, holoenzyme, it must have an apoenzyme plus a cofactor. Earlier, I mentioned about cofactors, which are a component of a conjugated enzyme. Cofactors are small. Uh, either small organic molecules or inorganic uh, particles. Okay? The organic molecule cofactors are called coenzymes. So let's, uh, I hope you'll be able to distinguish what is a coenzyme from a cofactor. Um, cofactors are either organic or inorganic. The organic molecules. Uh, are called coenzyme. Okay? Coenzymes are derived mainly, many of the coenzymes. Okay? Many of the coenzymes are derived from dietary vitamins. The inorganic cofactors, as I said earlier, they are in the form of ions. Okay? Such as a zinc, magnesium, uh, manganese, and iron. Okay? These metals, they are a part of the activity of enzymes. Okay, in order for the enzymes to become uh, active or reactive, um, 
they need these ions. Now, how do we classify or how do we name enzymes? Okay. Um, the nomenclature or the naming is based on uh, the type of the reactions they catalyze or the identity of a substrate. Now, the question is, what is a substrate? A substrate is the reactant in an enzyme catalyzed reaction. Okay? Or, in other words, the substrate is the substance upon which the enzyme acts. So, it's the substance in which the subs... Uh, it's an... Uh, it's an... Uh, it's a substance in which the enzyme acts upon. Okay, for example, there is a, let's say, S. Okay. And this is an enzyme. Alright. This uh, substance S here is also known as the substrate. Okay, that's the substrate. Because the enzyme acts on it. Alright? So, for example, in the fermentation process, sugar is converted to carbon dioxide. Therefore, in this reaction, the sugar is the substrate. Another example, when, uh, when sucrose, the dietary sucrose, is uh, broken. Remember, sucrose is composed of... Um, two monosaccharides, fructose and glucose. Okay, I hope you remember, still recall the the bond that connects or the glycosidic bond that connects sucrose. Okay, it's alpha, beta, one, two glycosidic bond. So when the dietary sucrose is hydrolyzed in the small intestine, an enzyme by the name of uh, sucrase acts on this. So, the enzyme is sucrase and the substrate is sucrose. Okay. These are the three important aspects on how to name enzymes. Alright? So, the first is we identify the substrate and we add the suffix ace. The following are examples. Urease for urea. Sucrase for sucrose. Lipase for lipids. Alright? And uh, of course, not all enzymes end with ace. There are some that end with in. For example, trepsin, chymotrepsin, and pepsin. All of these are... Uh, Proteolytic enzymes. We, we say proteolytic because they catalyze or they catalyze um, breaking of protein. Okay? The second type of, um, the second uh, aspect of naming is we identify the type of the reaction that they catalyze. For example, the enzyme catalyzes. Uh, oxidation reaction so the enzyme is um, identified as oxidase okay when an enzyme catalyzes hydrolysis so that enzyme is uh, identified as hydrolase okay however oxidase or uh, hydrolase this is a group of enzyme under this under oxidase, under hydrolase, there are many more other enzymes. Okay? So, to better specify the enzyme, we identify the substrate. Okay? For example, the enzyme belongs to oxidation, so you call that oxidase. But if the substrate is specifically glucose, so... The enzyme, the specific enzyme is called oxidase. Likewise, carboxylase has many other uh, 
examples or there are many uh, examples of carboxylase but specifically the substrate is pyruvate so the specific enzyme is called pyruvate carboxylase dehydrogenase uh, it's a group of enzymes that catalyzes dehydrogenation. Okay, dehydrogenation. So, under dehydrogenase, there are many other enzymes. But if the substrate is succinate, then the enzyme is succinate dehydrogenase. It specifically catalyzes dehydrogenation of succinate. 